So welcome everyone to the uh, United Nations CSW. This is our 66th convening on the Commission on the Status of Women. We do this every year and I am uh, your host, Yvonne Gamble for Women Leading Change Now. We are a political advocacy organization, obviously advocating for the uh, rights and assessments of women in their businesses and in their everyday lives. I am also the CEO of Sam Pete Financial Group and we are a venture capital firm. Today, I have a very good treat for you. As you know, our goal 13 is our topic for this year's uh, convention. And that is on climate change. And what I did, I reached out to this, uh, to this young woman. She has a wonderful business. She has a tax business. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, what does taxation have to do with climate change? Well, guess what? I thought the same thing, but we don't have to worry about it anymore because we have Miss Yolisa Molefi. She's here from South Africa and she's going to tell us exactly what it has to do. What I want her to do first is just tell you a little bit about herself and then we'll go into her beautiful presentation that she has put together to make it easy for us to understand how taxation and climate change, how that's going to work. So Yalisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you very much, Yvonne, and thank you for the opportunity to sort of talk through these uh, serious topics with you. Uh, as Yvonne said, I'm Yolisa Molife from uh, South Africa. I'm in Cape Town. I have a company called SNC Tax, where we provide uh, tax services and other financial services like accounting, uh, you know, what businesses need in order to comply. That's what we provide as SNC Tax. So yeah, I'm also uh, recently due to COVID, we established an NPO as well, which we hope will then uh, serve to empower the community with financial literacy, uh, including the tax, of course, now that Yvonne has uh, asked, what does tax have to do with climate change? So yeah, it's for us to go out and, uh, you know, give the community the information that they need about such topics. Thank you, Yvonne. Okay, well, thank you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up her presentation on this very topic. And we're just gonna go right into it. And that way she can um, let us know what uh, this actually you know, has to do uh, with it and just how it actually uh, works. Okay, thank you very much, Yvonne. As the topic says, it's uh, taxing climate change. So what does tax have to do with climate change? So uh, climate change, what is that? You know, global warming, people know these words, but then the thing is, how do they relate to the topic of tax? So we know all of us that uh, climate change is caused by the emission uh, of gases into the air that po pollute the air. So it causes a lot of disasters. So uh, the governments have to respond. The communities have to respond as well as businesses have to respond because it destroys a lot of uh, natural resources that all of these uh, different spheres of life do need to work with. So uh, the purpose of the taxation then is that it will uh, cause the community to change the way we do things. So it will hopefully change the way uh, businesses uh, look at the gases that through the processes that they use. For instance, uh, people are driving trucks, uh, people are driving cars which use petrol, and then there's, uh, you know, your industrials which use a lot of uh, processes that emit gases and they pollute the air. So the climate change has got a response that was introduced in most countries, 
some of them started as early as 30 years ago, the first ones that started. I know for us in South Africa, it's only been in the last few years. We are less than five years with our carbon tax that we also introduced as uh, the government of South Africa. So the carbon tax is a government policy in most countries where they try to sort of uh, stimulate a low carbon economy. So what they're trying to do is to make sure that uh, we are attentive. And uh, you, know when, you know when you hit someone with your tax, when, when someone says something is taxing, they mean that, you know, it's, it's, it's painful. It's a bit painful when it's taxing. So for you to respond and to pay attention, the government had to introduce the, the carbon taxes. So we, the, the intention is also just to change the community behaviors around, you know, the climate change, make sure we protect our climate. Thanks, Yvonne. We can move on. So now that we've introduced the carbon tax, how does this tax work? So the governments would collect uh, money through the taxes. So the person who pays has to be the polluter. So that's the principle of this uh, carbon tax. So the one who pollutes, as you can see in the picture here, that we've got, you know, the industrialists are busy working there and then in the air, pollution just goes everywhere. You know, people get sick and those kinds of things. So those are the people who will get taxed. The ones who, pull, who, pull, who pull, okay, <laughs> you know that word, who pollute the air. Uh, and then, how is it effective? How can we know that it's effective? The only way we're gonna know whether these uh, carbon taxes that the governments are putting in place are effective is by collecting the data, uh, which is why you find that uh, the financial statements have now introduced a reporting risks as part of the pack that the board is supposed to look at to make sure that the specific business is looking at the risk of what will happen if the, for instance, the climate change causes havoc in the environment and then the business, can it continue? Or what can the business do to mitigate that risk, to make sure that it doesn't get to the stage where their business will be, you know, collapsing because they didn't pay attention to the climate change. So the data that people collect in different ways is most important to give everyone the sense of whether this carbon tax does uh, have an effect or not but we're hoping that it, it does have an impact. So it, it gets added, the, the carbon tax, it adds in some communities to the, you know, to the rise in prices, unfortunately, because the minute uh, the businesses get taxed, then they will then make that part of their costs that they will then eventually pass on to the consumers, unfortunately. That's how it works. Although most countries do try and uh, introduce, uh, we call it revenue neutral systems. So those are systems where the idea is that you will collect as a government the taxes from those who pollute uh, the environment and then at the same time use those taxes to reduce the amounts of tax that need to be paid by the individuals in a country. So if that could be true, then which means then it's a neutral effect because you get those who are polluters to pay and then you use that same money to reduce taxes for those who've had their prices increased because uh, the, the, you know, the manufacturer had to uh, put in the price of the tax they're going to pay into the layman's, uh, you know, 
into the layman's products that they buy from him. So that's uh, the benefit to the countries could be where the individuals are able to then experience the effect of them reducing the taxes through collecting from those who pollute the air. Thank you, Yvonne, we can move on. And now we say, uh, this climate change, how is it taxing us? It's taxing us through the eradication of natural resources, because as we know, it's a threat to the economy, because if natural resources, uh, like for example, if you find that you know, the, the farming has been impacted because now, uh, you know, there's no rain at the right time. There's no, uh, or else when they've already put their crops on the ground and then, you know, there's heat that they didn't expect. You know, the whole temperature thing is now controlled by climate change because now it's, uh, you know, the, the pollution in the air makes a lot of havoc. Even in the sea, there's something that, uh, you know, people would have plastics that go into the sea, which then need to be cleaned up and that kind of thing. And they kill the animals in the sea. So that's also eradication of natural resources because then you're not gonna get those uh, fish uh, to use for your food anymore. And also remember in the sea, there's also oil spills that happen. Those also are eradicating now the natural resources which are normally found in the sea. So the community has got their livelihoods altered in a very bad way. In different environments, we see the cyclo cyclones everywhere. We see, you know, there's a lot of natural disasters that have now become frequent, which, uh, you know, those who know say that the climate change makes them even worse. That's why we've got them so frequently. So, which means it's really damaging to the infrastructure. It's disrupting the food systems. You know, we don't get farming as much as we used to. We don't get fishing as much as we used to, and uh, a lot of other economic systems that get messed up through climate change. Yes, Yvonne. And what strategies can countries and uh, you know communities put in place to mitigate these risks that I've spoken to? You know, uh, on a broader level, countries, uh, which is what uh, the UN is part of, countries would then put, create policies and put laws into place, which now, uh, you know, those carbon taxes form part of those laws and policies that get put in place. Uh, and then there would be community empowerment through information, because that's very much important for people to have the information. Because if we don't know what our actions can result into, then which means we're not going to change our behaviors. You know, when we do waste waters in, in Cape Town, we've had in the past few years something called day zero, which is when the, the water was so scarce that now it had to be counted, you know, how much do you use and all of that. So in those cases, then government's response would normally be to increase the tariffs so that you don't waste the water, so that those who waste the water then get to pay more so that they can then, uh, you know, try and put the money back into the system and help those who are impacted by the same uh, waste that's being done by others. So there's a green and blue economy investment that are happening in most countries around the world. The green economy, uh, you know, there's a lot of recycling of things. So which means now people are starting to establish businesses that are focused on recycling, which then 
it uh, sort of encourages the communities then to be mindful of their waste and know that it can be reused. There's also the blue economy, which is also growing now, where they're saving the fish in the sea. So making sure that things are done correctly, that will make sure that the sea is improved. You know, the animals that stay in that environment are, you know, preserved. So there's also, I think for us accountants, uh, tax practitioners and all those kinds of people, finance people, there's sustainable reporting for businesses. I think I've spoken a bit about this earlier, which is where then that financial pack for reporting should also have a sustainability report or a risk analysis report that talks to the environment, that talks to, uh, you know, the, the, the stakeholders that the company has and how mindful must the company be of its stakeholders and what are the impacts if you don't consider the stakeholders as a company. So that's an, another mitigating factor that we can, we can put up and say each company has to sort of abide by these reporting uh, rules. Although they may not be compulsory in most cases, but still it helps the company itself to be mindful of the kind of reporting that includes things like the climate change and the environment around the business processes. Yes, Yvonne. And now we go to what's the plight of women during climate change? Women are the backbone of most economies and especially rural economies. In uh, most of South Africa is made up of rural uh, areas. So maybe wondering why I would be focusing more on rural areas. Although we in Cape Town in an urban area, but Cape Town also has its own rural areas and the rest of South Africa and Africa in general has a lot of rural areas where most of the women are based. So the impact in the environment, it affects mostly those women who are trying to make livelihoods in the rural areas. For example, the access to essential resources like the water. Normally it's not an easy thing to get water, but now with climate change, it becomes even more difficult because if the rivers are gonna be swept away, which is where women would fetch water from. So with the extreme climate conditions, then those rivers will be swept away. Uh, they will have to, you know, try and find other means and ways of getting water. There's also access to economic resources such as uh, where they do farming, you know. The farms now are very far from where people live because then farming is almost destroyed. So which means now people have got to walk far or drive far to be able to find food in farms. And also where they do have farming, farm, farms, they will then still experience extreme weather conditions which make the farms not to be so productive as they used to be. And also access to markets, because then if there's climate change, you find that, you know, there's a lot of uh, roads that are washed off in rural areas. There's a lot of, uh, even those that are not washed off, it's pollution all the way. If you are going to go and find transport, going to a very far place, that impacts on the pollution that we're trying to avoid. And then there's access to nutritious foods. For example, the fish that I've already mentioned, that the fish 
you know, if the fish is dying in areas where people can be used to find it, then which means that it's becoming more and more expensive as it is a scarce resource. So nutritious foods, even the vegetables, because now farm, farms are not as productive as they used to be. So which means it's something that's now very expensive for everyone. And women are the ones who are out there supposed to be feeding the family. So which means they are the ones who are closer to how much the food costs to budgeting for it. And then if now their budgets are very much, you know, more expensive than, than they used to be. So which means now they will end up resorting to non-nutritious foods to feed their families. Then there's access to capital to start new businesses. Uh, for example, these days there's home gardens. But now if the environment, especially the economic environment, is not open to sort of uh, capitalizing those kinds of ventures, then which means then the women suffer because they are the ones who create these home gardens with the hope of uh, being able to make a living out of them. So it is a quite a dire situation for women out there because of climate change. And that means that we as women should be the ones on the forefront of trying to make sure that those who are not considering their actions to actions that impact the climate get, you know, they get to know about it. They get to understand their impact that they're making by their actions that they may, sometimes they are aware of them, sometimes they're not even aware of the impact that they have or on the community, on the economy, and on the livelihoods of individuals in general. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Well, you are quite welcome. Oh my goodness, that was just, uh, that was amazing. Wow. So you went to a tax expert and you asked about climate change. And my goodness, you told us all about it. Uh, the carbon tax, you know, how that's actually put together. And I love what you're saying about the blue and the green and those different economies, because all of this makes a, makes a huge difference. And it's, it's almost like we can't get away from it. We can't get away, you know, from what we need to do or from even if we do something and now we have data. So we're, we're doing, um, are you seeing any movement where you are in South Africa with these different tariffs that are being, you know, are the manufacturers, are they changing the way they're manufacturing or are they just simply paying the taxes? Hey, Yvonne, that's a good question because most of the companies for now, since South Africa only started this a few years ago, as I mentioned, I think uh, it's, it's human nature to take time to respond positively to any change because these companies for now are just paying the taxes. So you find that changing their, the way they do things is not happening yet. So which means that they just decide, okay, we have to operate in this environment and therefore we have to pay these taxes, which is why I'm saying uh, actually the man on the street uh, suffers at the end because then they will put it into their cost for that production and then it will just increase the price. So in, in essence, uh, what that sounds like is they're really not paying for it at all. It's the people are paying for it and they're continuing to, to do it. Um, you know, it's, I know we probably won't answer that question here, but I will venture this question, you know, out there, you know, to the public at large. And that is, when are we going to get it? Are we going to get it when everything is, uh, for lack of a better term, floating down the river and we have nothing, you know, are we then going to say, oh, we should have done, we could have done, or are we going to now begin to make the changes? 
because cl the climate this does not the climate is going to change scientifically yes the earth the axis moves everything is going to change there are a lot of things that we do that actually um, make uh, that have such a greater impact on the environment and there but that change is slow to take place as well as the healing of the land of the water of the the fowl that fly in the air that takes longer and but so therefore it's the small things like the recycling that you spoke about the home gardens and those out there who are investors can most certainly begin to make some of those blue and green investments available and accessible to people who are in the smaller home or the cottage industries as they have been uh, termed around the world. So I, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, Yalisa, and I want you to, uh, are there anything else you want to share with us uh, about your company before we go? Uh, before we close this up, because this has been very good, and I want this to really rest on the presentation that you gave. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Uh, yes, our company, SNC Techs, we, as I said earlier, we currently also have a nonprofit company, which we hoping that, you know, we could partner with different entities. Our main aim is to support entrepreneurs and to grow entrepreneurship in South Africa. So we hope that we'll get your support. Okay. And if you just, just one quick question, if you did partner with an organization, what would you be bringing to that organization or what would you be looking for uh, to, uh, to an organization to become on as a partner? What are you looking for? Okay, in terms of, uh, you know what, what we bring to the partnership, firstly, we deal with a lot of small businesses because firstly, I did mention that uh, I've got a company called SNC Tax. We are tax practitioners and accountants. So which means we've dealt with a lot of small businesses. So we've seen the plight of small businesses in South Africa. So uh, what we would bring to the table is the businesses that need support from those people who would like to support them. For instance, as, I, as we talked about, there's people who want to start, uh, you know, the home gardens. There's people who want to start, you know, there's there's chicken farming that's in a smaller scale that's happening uh, mushrooming everywhere these days. So what we as SNC Techs want to bring is we bring the entrepreneurs and we also bring the support which is uh you know we've uh, recognized during the the covid lockdowns that economies went down especially the small businesses but then the governments came up with grants they came up with uh, other institutions came up with loans and that kind of things but we found that the small businesses still were not able to participate because they are non-compliant in many ways. So that's where SNC Tax comes in. We make sure that they've got their compliance in place and make sure that while they're busy doing the business, because a small business is normally a one, two men show. So which means they end up not looking after their admin. And secondly, the admin they don't look after, they can't even pay for it. They can't afford to pay for it. So which is why then we would partner with someone who's wanting to invest in these businesses. And on our side, we make sure that their compliance is always up to date. So they don't have to pay for it. The person who supports it or the organization who supports them will then take care of those kinds of uh, expenses while they grow the business because you know a small business just focuses on the process and the and the sales and that kind of thing forgetting you know about the fact that if you're non-compliant in most south african dealing with south african government you're not going to get the next job you can get, you would have got the first one but then the next one you may not get because you're now non-compliant you know yeah. So we're trying to make sure that businesses do get to see the next day, you know? Okay. I, they die so quickly. Okay. 
Okay, well, very good. Well, there you have it. So potential partners out there, she has all the businesses uh, that she can bring to you. She can handle the taxes and the compliancy uh, for those businesses to make certain that they uh, are up to um, compliance and that they stay in compliance. And she's looking for those businesses who can provide you know, access to markets and access to capital. Okay, well, thank you very thank you. much. And we here at Women Leading Change Now, we're so um, appreciative to have you on as one of our uh, panel speakers. And we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yvonne.